I'm David Tracy with Jalopnik. I'm at a junkyard near Detroit on a quest to grab the coolest car parts I can find, take them back to my workbench, and show you how they work. Let's see what I can find. All right, so today we're looking for axle shafts. Now, that might not sound that exciting to you, but they're responsible for getting the power to the wheels, and they're actually really fascinating. So let's see what the junkyard has in store for us. Look at that. What kind of luck is that? An axle shaft. On the other side, there should be the smaller end of it. Oh, there it is, it's sitting right back here. Now we're gonna look for a U-joint style axle shaft. Bingo. U-joint style axle shaft right here. And it looks like just two U U's like that. Oh, look at that. That is a modern day miracle right there. Yeah, that is a miracle that never works. Oh, come on. All right, so we have our half shafts here. One from a Chrysler minivan and the other from a heavy duty Ram pickup. Now we're going to take them back to my garage and tear into them to see how they work. All right, so now that we've got our shafts back from the junkyard and on my workbench, we're going to have a look at how your car is able to take your engine's power and transfer it into rotational motion of your wheels, even when those wheels are moving up and down and left and right. Axle shafts. The most common type is the one right in front of me, it's a CV axle. This is what you see in most modern passenger cars. Now the way this works is this side plugs into your car's transaxle, which is mounted to the body of your car. We have this little C-clip, and that's what clamps this shaft into your car's transaxle. This here is your CV housing, uh, inside of which there are bearings and grease, and then that grease is held in by a rubber boot. This is the weak point of these CV axles. This side, is what powers your wheels through these splines. So you have these rubber boots which cover CV joints. Those joints give the wheel side the freedom to move up and down when your car hits bumps and also left and right when you take turns, despite this side being fixed. We see these splines. Those splines are what transfer the rotational motion of the shaft into your wheel. Now I'm gonna tear into this to look at those bearings. Okay, so this is a tripod style CV joint. It consists of a spider here in the center with three sort of posts coming out of it. And on those posts ride these rollers. And those rollers spin via a bunch of little roller bearings. This allows for plunge. So when you hit a bump, um, this can plunge. As this moves, you can see those rollers kind of move up in that bore. So that's a tripod style joint. It's standard for the inner CV joint on a front wheel drive car. And now we're gonna bust open this outer joint. So let's see if we can just flip this whole thing. Flip. So much grease. Okay, it's just a cage with ball bearings and grooves on the inside of this housing that those balls ride in. Whoa! There, we got a ball There we go, finally. These ball bearings go between these little fingers in the inner race and in these little holes of the cage. So you can see how the inner race can rotate freely about the cage. These ball bearings also ride on the inside of this cup here. They're able to move up and down and the cage is able to rotate within this assembly. Um, now we're gonna move on to U-joints. Okay, so those CV style axles you see on all sorts of different kinds of passenger cars. On 
heavier duty stuff, especially things with solid axles, you'll see U-joint axle shafts like this one here. Just has a single pivot and that's because it sits inside of an axle. That axle moves up and down. So all this has to do is comply when you turn your wheel left and right. It receives power from a drive shaft like this one. When that axle moves up and down, the drive shaft between the transmission or transfer case and the axle will stretch and retract along some splines in here. So this takes up the up and down motion of the axle. All right, so the u has got four caps that allow pivots in both directions. Now in these caps, you've got needle bearings around the circumference. Those needle bearings are covered in grease and sealed with a little rubber or silicone little seal there, which allows motion in this direction and also in that direction. So the downsides of a U-joint connection compared to a CV axle. It's a very simple device, very cheap, very strong, but it has a, an Achilles heel, and that is, when this is at a steep angle, this shaft's rotational speed is actually different from this one. This shaft will be spinning at a steady rate. This shaft will speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, and that'll manifest itself in a jerky ride. That's why this is called a constant velocity joint. Even if it's at a steep angle, this rotational velocity will equal this your wheel's rotational velocity. The downsides of the CV joint, these rubber boots tend to crack, and when they allow moisture in, this joint is gonna fail, and they're harder to replace. A U-joint, you can just use a hammer and a socket, and you can replace it, it's dirt cheap. If a CV joint fails, you're gonna be replacing your whole axle shaft. So, that's how these shafts work, that's how your engine delivers power to the wheels. Let's see what Junkyard has for us next time. Oh, this thing is just playing me now. It's over for you. It's also over for my socket, but it's over for you as well.